Now, hey, what's up, everyone? Happy Wednesday. How's everyone doing? <clears throat> Alright, let me set up my stuff real quick. We got a bunch of renewals that are probably going to come in, so thank you for all the membership renewals if you're here in the chat. But what is up? All right. So we got a bunch of people who are in the pre-stream chat. We got Ver... Ver how do you say your name? Ver XC, X Gaming, Kevin O, Craig Lilly, FG204. Uh, we got Shane Eslick, as always. Extreme Zone 987, Colin Schultz, Kale 130, as we see every week, Craig Lilly. Um, who else we got? We got Jason Whitmer, aka Drubbler. Um, let's see, Lisit World Tech. And then we have the Net Guy, who's actually I met up with the Net Guy this past weekend. Uh, for the first time, he's a lo he's a content creator that's in Washington State as well, very close to me. We got Shauner. What's up, Shauner? Glad to have you here. Um, all right, but yeah. So how everybody, how's everybody doing? So as you can see in the thumbnail and the title of the stream, uh, we are on a quest today to find the cheapest, worthwhile gaming pre-built gaming PC. I'm just gonna cap it at a thousand. Uh, just because there's plenty of systems I know that exist out there that are around a thousand. But what is the cheapest one that we can find? And I'll talk more about it later. But yeah, uh, but for now, we're just going to hang out for a little bit. Let people get their waters, their drinks, use the restroom and all of that. And uh, I, I can just talk about uh, what's been going on and stuff like that. <clears throat> you sold a PC today, bought a mini fridge and getting ready to sell you. Your buddy at 3060 Ti. Shauner, did you sell that on Jawa? Or was that like a local sale? Local sale. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah, my face does look different. So that's part of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, and I'll give it a few more minutes before I do. In terms of like my health and everything. But yeah, I got a lot of stuff popping up on my face. They're not bug bites. Hey, what's up, Generic Woodworking Channel? Do I have any recommendations on a pre-built for around 3k? Uh, honestly, what would get you the most value? I, I don't often look at pre-builds that expensive. Um, at that point, I would try to look for probably a boutique builder. One that doesn't charge a crazy amount. The, the only thing about pre-built companies is when you start going over like two thousand three thousand dollars they start charging a lot more for labor so if you can find someone who could do it for like only 150 you can get more value out of it i think there's like an upper limit in terms of value you can get out of a pre-built coalition gaming what's up chris scored a hp omen desktop with the i5 7400 8 gigs of ram uh 1060 nice for 200 bucks very solid yeah yeah so shauna brings up a good point on java.gg if you have three thousand dollars and you're okay with buying it from like a a smaller like you know home builder um the, the only thing is that with java you don't get the warranty if you're spending three thousand dollars on a system in the first place are you the type of buyer who kind of needs that warranty or wants that peace of mind because you're already willing to spend for someone else to build it for you. With Jawa, I mean, Jawa can only really enforce, uh, you know, the PC for the first couple of days where you have to inspect it. Obviously, they do verify their sellers. So you kind of have the trust me, bro, kind of like what we talked about with Linus. You kind of have that kind of warranty. The verified sellers can say that they'll do all these things for you. But when the time comes, if you have a very, like, expensive problem that's um you know that's difficult to deal with will they actually deal with it or not it's not a huge like it's not a high probability that anything will go wrong just because computers are pretty like resilient and uh it's kind of hard to mess up a pc build but it's just more of the luck of the draw type of thing so yeah jawa probably would have the some of the best value when you start spending that much but uh i i know just some people won't be comfortable with it 
want to co-op Saints Row. Um, do you have any extra keys I can buy from you, Jason? Yeah, see, like, I saw one with the RTX. It, at $2,800, I think a Ryzen 9 and RTX 3080, you're not getting enough for your money. You should be, I mean, that's easily 3080 Ti, if not 3090 territory. Of course, it depends on what's in the system. Um, like, if it has four terabytes of SSDs and like DDR5 and 64, 120 gigabytes of RAM, those things will bring the price up. But just hearing RTX 3080 and $2,800 doesn't sound like that great of a deal. Any good GPU to pair with a 10400F? Um, I mean, a uh, 6600XT actually, which is what we were talking about. Uh, I'll bring that up now. So this $300 card after rebate would be perfect to pair with that 10400F. Um, I have this pinned at the top. I just went to quickly look for what is the, you know, uh, what is a hot graphics card deal that I found on Newegg. And this was one of the first ones that popped up. There, You can also get a 6600 for 275 right now, which is a pretty good deal as well. But man, 300, if you don't mind the rebate, this is... I, I think we saw this deal last week. So it's pretty common now, but um, it's not like the prices continue to drop on AMD side anyways because they've already, they're already kind of charging a, you know, a low amount for their stuff relative to Nvidia and the MSRP. So yeah, I think this car would be a perfect fit for a 10400F pairing. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on with me. So StockX video, uh, StockX should have received the fake graphics card that I sold. They should have received it back. So now we just wait for StockX to return the money and then I could wrap up the video. So that's what that is. I'm hoping, I'm just really hoping I can get that out this weekend, but it all depends on how long StockX takes. Uh, second thing regarding like health and stuff, uh, I don't have any more fevers, so that's good. Energy level is not fully recovered yet. And as you can probably see on my face, those aren't bug bites and my neck a little bit. So I've got a ton of rashes that are popping up and I can show you on my arm too. So these were all the mosquito bite stuff on the arm. They didn't bite up to my like bicep and tricep and shoulders. This is all just rash that is just popping up on my arm. And I've got them on both arms, which kind of sucks. So I need to see a specialist about this, but it's hard to schedule an appointment. Um, I, I tried to schedule an appointment. They said it's two months out to October. So I just got to deal with this um, until then. Yay, healthcare system. It's not, it's not monkeypox. Uh, I, I definitely, I, I mean, urgent care already ruled that out when I went uh, a couple of weeks ago. But monkey pox, if you look at the rashes from those, they're almost like boils. Th these aren't itchy. These, they don't hurt. It's just, I don't know where they came from. They're just popping up and I have them on my chest too. But yeah. Yeah, if I tell them that I'm also having chest pains. Uh, well, no, then they would say go to the ER and then I gotta pay the co-pays and the deductibles for the ER, which is a lot more expensive than going to urgent care. So I'm not dying. So I guess I'm, I'm just gonna have to wait for it. Diabetes. I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things where it could just be a new health issue that's popping up for me. So we'll have to see. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Hopefully they can just get me some stuff to help treat it once I do get in with the specialist so yeah yeah health is first and foremost yeah and i have some popping up on my head too those aren't pimples those aren't bug bites just rashes popping up on my face but yeah Um, okay, so let's see. We're about 10 minutes in the stream. We should have quite a few people here. All right, so the goal of today's stream is to basically open up every single, a, br a browser tab for almost every single, uh, like system integrator out there and see what each of their cheapest system is and try to determine the best under 1,000 worthwhile. And for my criteria, because we're looking only for like $1,000 as the cap price, uh, not including tax or shipping, just like the price that they show on the website. Uh, if it could run, you know, modern titles at around 60 FPS, 1080p, I think that's kind of a, a win. 
So you can't really expect that much more out of like system integrators and stuff like that. So they're using all new parts and uh, things like that. So it's not like looking at the used market, but um, am, I make, am I making you itch? I'm sorry if I am. <laughs> have you checked to see if you have ringworm? Um, I thought it might've been ringworm, but just looking at the, the symptoms and when I got checked out at urgent care and they saw it, they didn't think it was anything, any concern. The patterns I have on these are not ringworm-like patterns. Jason Whitmer sold the PC one for 1K last month with the 3060 and 5600X. Uh, was that all new parts, or...? How much profit did you make off of a system like that? What, what kind of... Did you put, like... What hard drive did you put in there? Please don't tell me you put, like, a 256 with, uh, like, a 1 terabyte spinner or something like that. You, you must have cut corners to still make a profit off of that. Hey, see you later, Citrus. 250 NVMe. You sold a $1,000 system with a 250 gigabyte SSD in it. And the PSU was a 600 watt white. And what, the 600 watt white, I think it's like a D tier. Honestly, I'm not even con too concerned with the 600 watt white. Again, the tier list is not like a major concern of mine. Uh, I've the 600 watt white is a power supply I've used in plenty of systems. So I'm not a, like a stickler or a snob when it comes to that. But 250 and be me with a two terabyte HDD. I, th uh, that's, you're gonna fill up that SSD so fast and you're not gonna be able to fit many games on it. So I can see why you sold it for a thousand dollars because you cut corners, but they bought it. Yeah, I mean, so that's not what I'm looking for today. I'm looking for, System integrators that put together worthwhile systems that make sense and that, you know, you would happily recommend to you, like your closest family member or friends. Like, I, I don't know if I would recommend, I might recommend a $1,000 that build that you sold, Jason. I would tell them to upgrade the SSD really fast because what, uh, one terabyte, some of the cheaper ones are like 70, 60 bucks. So yeah, I might tell them to do that, but it's, that's still a pain for a noob to do. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for pre-builds, this wait, didn't we look at the Skytech Archangel 3.0 last week or in a previous stream? Um, so for right now, for audience participation, can y'all name out all the system integrators that you can think of off the top of your head? So I'll uh, I'll go to come on. So we'll go to HP pre-built PC. So we'll do HP. Dell gaming PC pre-built. Uh, what else we got? We got NZXT. Uh, okay. No, the gaming PC started at 850? Hmm. I thought they... Well, okay, never mind. I, I knew they had builds that cheap, but I haven't seen this 850 one yet. I buy power. There we go. That's a big one. What else we got? Arte <laughs> Artesian. Oh, wait. Uh, AES Tech Gaming is the best hands down. All right, let's take a look at that. AES Tech Gaming. And, okay, they need to have ready-to-ship PCs. I'm not looking for companies that you have to put in, like, an email and then tell them what your budget is and what you're looking for. I'm talking about I could go to their website and I could look at a PC that I could just buy right now. So is that what AES Tech Gaming is? Uh, custom. Oh, ready to ship. Okay, so they do have some of these. We don't have any products here right now, so we can't really look at AES Tech if everything has to be built to order. Uh, I guess they have something here. Uh, hey, what's going on here? Why did it... Okay, so we'll go AES Gaming. What else we got? ABS Gaming PC. Does it take me straight to Newegg? No, it doesn't. ABS on Newegg? Okay. Uh, Redux? I don't think has any... Uh, any PCs that are $1,000, but we can take a look. Okay. Ooh, we got a Costco. Yes, I saw that on Slick Deals. Uh, Costco, Slick Deals, 12700 and a 3060. So I saw this four days ago. Yes, 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 yes. So there's this uh, Lenovo Idea Center. So we can take a look at this. Even though this one, I think this deal is going to go away. Um, But this is a good one to look at. Like... I'm pretty sure Lenovo's own website isn't going to have this for this cheap. But what else do we got? Alienware on it, Walmart, Skytech. 
So what we're gonna do is on each tab, we're gonna try to find the cheapest under $1,000 worthwhile PC. And then at the end, kind of line them up and do a comparison, try to find the best one. So Amazon pre-built. Uh, I mean, I guess we can look just on Amazon gaming PC as well. Digital Storm, which is a parent company of Build Redux. Okay, what else we got in there? So I think I've got a lot. We got Digital Storm, Amazon, Skytech, Lenovo from Costco, Build Redux, uh, ABS, their website, but they're also on Newegg, and we'll look at the Newegg as well. Uh, we'll AES, iBuyPower, NZXT, Dell, HP. <clears throat> GameStop, yeah, I remember seeing that. So let's take a look there. GameStop, I mean, I think GameStop, what they're trying to do is become a marketplace. So, uh, let's see. Are these pre-builds like from them or is it just from like Skytech or other companies trying to sell through here? Yeah, I buy power, cyber power. So it's just a bunch, they're just a marketplace. Um, oh, they got a thousand dollar one right here. So what else we got? Buying anything from GameStop would make you feel soiled, says Patrick McGovern. Why? We want them to succeed so that uh, Moas can happen. Main gear. Uh, let's see. Gaming desktops. All right, we got main gear. Thanks for the <clears throat> the suggestion, Drew. Origin. Man. Okay, look at this. I'm pretty sure we're only at like the tip of the iceberg. In the last, what, couple of minutes, people just throwing out suggestions. We already have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like 15, which, oh, Starforge. I think Starforge actually, because this is the, um, oh, and let's do Phoenix PC. I got, I'm going to do a, a review of all their stuff, or at least two of their systems and their website and pricing uh, coming up as well. But, all right, we got plenty now. We got, like, almost 20 different ones. And people are still naming... Oh, Power GPU. I don't think Power GPU has any systems under 1,000. Though I did want to talk about Power GPU in a future stream uh, regarding their pricing. Because Power GPU, very popular on social media. I think a very has a very positive image on social media. Has good relationship with streamers and stuff like that. But Power GPU builds are very pricey. If you look at the power GPU, they have ready to ship builds. Just take a look at the prices of some of these and the specs that you get for them. Um, it's definitely a lot higher than basically every other uh, system integrator. But we won't do power GPU because I'm pretty sure they don't have a thousand dollar build. Maybe here they have a thirteen hundred dollar build. We'll take a look at that one. <clears throat> does Steam Deck count? No, Steam Deck does not count as a PC. Um, okay. So let's let's take a look. Let's start taking a look. Did I go to origin here? Uh, gaming PC. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. My privacy cookies. Whatever. All right. Desktop computers. Omen Gaming. See, the thing about this is, where's the all gaming? View all desktops. Okay, I don't want to just look at Omen because that's their pricier gaming line. If they have a non-Omen desktop, uh, I would love to look at that. So we'll go by lowest price from 800 to 1000 And let's see what we got. Uh, okay, so this is probably a little hard to see, so let me zoom in. <clears throat> HP has the Vitus line now. Yep, or Victus. I would literally kill someone to get a Micro Center in Tulsa. Uh, are the Micro Center Platinum Collection builds good prices? They typically are. Um, I haven't looked at them in a while, but I don't want to look at Micro Center for this anyways, because uh, I, I want it to be like online, readily available, like right now. So for AMD, uh, for their cheaper, uh, man, they have so many all-in-ones. Here's the Omen gaming PC with a 5600G and a 3050 for 900 bucks. 5500 so we're gonna ignore that one what else they have so this one has a 3050 in it which is not the best and only eight gigabytes of ram so yeah but if this is the best they have to offer for around a thousand um oh this one has a 1660 super with 1660 super is not bad uh it's just not current gen 
but it has a 12400 in it only eight gigabytes of ram hmm why not go on jawa there might be better 1k or less pc builds the reason is because jawa builds there's only one of them so it's not like multiple people can buy them and two they're not necessarily all new parts um and warranty and stuff like that on jawa is not the same as these system integrators as much as i love jawa and i've covered them plenty of times on streams and in videos uh that that's not what we're trying to do in this video or this stream rather um okay so continuing down hp's line for a thousand bucks and then they've got a bunch of these all-in-one pcs that's built into the monitor so we're not gonna look at those so between these two 900 for a gtx or rtx 3050 with the 5600 g versus a 12400 with a 1660 super both has eight gigabytes of ram which would you guys choose between these two hello welcome home huh yeah i fed them between these two uh it's because They're, they're pretty similar. With the 3050, you get the the uh, more like, more VRAM, you get the more... The cards aren't going to be too different, but you do have uh, RTX. Uh, and then, even though ray tracing on a 3050 is not going to be the best experience. Um, but the 5600G versus 12400, yeah, I think I would lean towards the, the 3050 one. But where I think of a 2080 Ti in 2022, I think that's still a great card. Check out ARC A380 PCs. They have pre-builts that have ARC A380s in them? Like desktop PCs and not laptops? Uh, this one's a 12400, so this does have integrated graphics. You can still do quick sync and things like that. This isn't a 12400F. Uh, but between these two, uh, I think I'm leaning... Because this one's also cheaper by 50 bucks. So 50 bucks and you get the 3050 over the 1660 Super. And then you have a 5600G, which is, eh. So I think I'm gonna, this is gonna be HP's winner. Uh, the Omen one. I mean, the case, I'm not a big fan of that case. It looks really big and uh, yeah. All right, so bye-bye, uh, 1660 Super Build. But this is still not great value. They should have easily been able to fit 16 gigabytes of RAM into the system. 16 gigs of RAM is like 45 bucks. And that's like for us as consumers to buy it. Them as system integrators should be getting bulk discounts, especially they're probably using budget ugly RAM too. So, um, all right, moving on to the next one. We got Dell Gaming PCs. We're not going to be able to look at anything Alienware-wise because, yeah. So, Omen PCs, that's a good point. They're usually proprietary. This one, I don't know if it uh, specs. Uh, okay, let's see. Included, 3050. They don't, they're not going to tell us what the motherboard is, are they? Nope. They don't. Um, and none of these pictures are going to give us any information. So, just because I picked this system doesn't mean that I think it's good value. I'm just trying to find the, the lowest price system that everybody has to offer. And then, later on in the end, we'll down-select it to the companies that actually have stuff that are worthwhile. Hey, what's up, Christopher Coonan? Dr. Christopher Coonan, he calls himself. Um, okay. So, gaming desktops, we're on Alienware now. I yeah. Typically, like, honestly, I would not recommend this to anybody unless... They had a crazy sale and it was like 600 bucks but uh we're just going through them just because they're very big popular system integrators whether or not they provide good value or not um can you sort by price here yeah so we'll go for a thousand dollars max and we'll go 800 here aes tech gaming build is 11.49 says immortal fireboy uh what do you mean by that aes tech where is that tab i thought i had oh uh, nope, that's main gear. Where's the AES? That's ABS. AES Tech Gaming build. Okay, so we'll we'll take a look at that in a second. But what does Dell have to offer? For a thousand dollars, okay. Wait, please enter values between eleven sixty 
they don't have anything under oh you, you probably can't even see this when i try to put the price right here please enter values between 1160 so and 4690 so they are technically disqualified oh Dell, your website is so badly designed it's popping all over the place okay 1160 i'll put 1300 just to see what pops up <clears throat> ft2 forces i know how crappy alienware can be with no airflow and such but for some reason i like the way that you like the way these look these are so like on your desk or on the the floor these it's i hate cases that are not that have like these kinds of slants in them it's just kind of like a waste of volume in space like you could have had something because your your footprints already got going to here so it's not like you can put anything in front of this space anyways and then like the top here how it has this big slant i don't know i'm just a fan of cases that um for the footprint that they have just you know make it a box shape it's the most efficient yeah it looks like a dyson fan but this looks like the cheapest build they have uh I think yeah so putting in the lowest price it's 1200 bucks wow apparently they're saying you save 680 because the, the value of this is supposed to be 1900 right here <clears throat> you hate alienware cases but they retain their value on ebay do they actually retain their value though are people buying like you know alienware cases that are emptied out um or are they just sitting on ebay with high inflated prices that and don't move uh so okay alienware uh, aurora alienware laptops actually have pretty decent value especially when you get them on sale or from their uh refurbished but this one okay ryzen 7 5800 non-x uh R rtx 3060 16 gigabytes of ram uh 512 ssd uh liquid cooling and 1000 watt power supply which really means nothing if you don't tell us the exact power supply okay i'm actually surprised this is the cheapest that alienware has to offer for 1200 bucks you're getting a 3060 16 gigs of ram at least unlike hp who was offering eight gigs uh which was very sad uh and then a 5800 this i would say is not horrible considering it they are giving you a ryzen 7 and a 3060 which is still kind of stupidly overpriced uh would have been nice to see one terabyte ram here i i wouldn't recommend this for anyone to buy but i will say that i'm pleasantly surprised that this is on sale for this much right I would have thought this from Alienware would have cost at least fourteen hundred or fifteen hundred. So while I don't think it's good value or it's worth it, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, and the thing about Alienware too, again, uh, people brought up proprietary parts. You can just take a like, take a look at this right here. Uh, yeah, you can just tell that. This isn't going to be a fun uh, time if you have to do any upgrades. Uh, and man, are they that cheap that they just leave this as like the bare metal on the back? As opposed to like, I don't know, powder coating it, the case. But yeah. Okay, now we're moving on to NZXT. Let's see what they have so far. Um... So they have two PCs that are around a thousand. We can take a look at both, or no, not two that are around a thousand. So here's their eight hundred fifty dollar PC. They're including the NZXT Flow case, so that's nice to see because people love to complain about NZXT cases not having good airflow. So what do we get for eight hundred fifty dollars right now from NZXT? A ten four hundred, which isn't bad. Um, I think a lot of companies for this price would be giving you like an i three. Uh, and then you got an RTX 3050, which, while it's not the most ideal, wait, why is this, this is 850, why is this showing 1,000? Oh, because they're trying to bundle, nope, we're not going to get that. So it is 850, they're trying to bundle their mouse and keyboard. For 850, um, okay, that's way better than Alienware's, wait, let's see, 350, how much RAM are we getting here? We got to make sure NZXT... Is filling out the rest of the PC decently well. Yeah, I saw the Gamers Nexus video on the Alienware. Um, it's weird. I don't get... I'm not accusing Steve of anything, but the amount of PCs that he's 
receive that just has blatant like loose screws or like horrible mistakes on them i don't understand the probability of that how is it that at, what is it like half of the pcs pre-built from system integrators that he bought how is it that it's that high of a chance that he has like really big things wrong with it um i'm, I'm not saying he like they go in there and like put those problems in there but it just seems like an odd like for a huge youtube channel to buy these secretly and then have these glaring problems on multiple pcs i don't know it just seems like he he's really lucky because that's content for him but it, it just seems odd that there's that many i've known plenty of people who bought pre-built pcs and haven't had problems like that um so and then you know some of you out there i guess that's not a big enough pool uh, to pull from it's like anecdotal evidence yeah we're doing twitter stuff today so in the second hour of the stream we'll look at twitter um but okay let's finish off this nzxt build they do you are getting aio which i don't really value too much but aios cost more than air coolers uh and then sfx there's some what, what's up with this i don't know if you're actually going to be getting an sfx power supply here which makes no sense um Hey, it's unbroken. 11 months. Thank you for the renewal. Um, what else do we have here? 8. Ah, oh, NZXT. Okay, I'm disappointed in NZXT now. 8 gigabytes of RAM. Come on. You're frying up your refinished grill. Nice, Chris. Nice, nice. Thank you for the reminder. For the water. Yeah, NZXT. I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, with this eight gigabytes here, uh, everything else looks fine for 850 bucks from a system integrator. I don't think you should be expect that much more. You're not getting 3060, no way. Would have been nice because 3050s are going for the same price as 6600 XTs here, but it's just a known thing for whatever reason. You know, people in this chat will understand that a 6600 XT is well worth it over a 3050, but for a brand new consumer they probably have the nvidia bias just from what they've read online or from what their friends have or something they and they you know they probably can't move their amd systems as much so that's why they put this in there but yeah eight gigabytes of ram very disappointed to see let's see what their 50 dollars over our cap pc has in it so this one has h710 wow okay so for 200 dollars more just by looking at the picture it's looking like you're getting are we really getting two AIOs in here? Uh, well, one, yeah, an AIO for the graphics card and the CPU. This is kind of surprising, uh, but let's take a look at what we got here. Ah, uh, so they're keeping it at the 10400, and they've got the Kraken X73. Okay, that's fine. 650 watt power supply. You do have a 3060, which. $1,050 for a pre-built system with a 3060. That's actually not bad. I can't think of many other system integrators that are giving 3060s in builds around 1,000. Hey, what's up, Jelly Man? Thanks for the kind words. Um, does anyone actually use NVIDIA Broadcast? Like, the NVIDIA software to stream. I've never tried it before. I just use OBS. But anyone out, any of you all out there, have you used the NVIDIA like GeForce Experience streaming software to stream something? I've yeah. I don't. It doesn't have a lot of flexibility. Like when you go to the control panel. So I've never tried. Um, but okay, 16 gigs of RAM. At least that's good to see. 500 gigabyte SSD. Oh my goodness. So NZXT's kind of cutting corners here. That's how they got the price down. Even though between a $500 and a one terabyte hard drive or SSD, that's only like a maybe a $35 to $40 price difference. So um, for the major specs, 10, 400 and a 3060 in, uh, you know, $1,000, 50, that's not bad, but they did cut corners a little bit. And let me look at the graphics card. They don't mention anything. Yeah, see, they don't mention if you're actually getting the uh, the AIO on the graphics card. Chris, uh, Chris Raccoonin has tried it, and he says it sucks. 
Yeah, I mean, you can't even do layers and scenes and stuff, right? So, like, what streamer would actually want to use that? Except for the Shadow Play, or did they rename it? Is it even called NVIDIA Shadow Play anymore? That was the only reason I used the recording stuff from NVIDIA's side when, when I was using it for Shadow Play. But nowadays, I just actually uh, record using OBS, too, if I need to do stuff for videos and ca uh, screen capture, so. Okay, so this build... Not the worst value, but also I don't think it's going to be a contender at the end here. Okay, we got I buy power next. The axo axolotls, those are your the lizards, right? I think we talked about this in the previous streams. Uh, yeah, for your, I think I remember Patrick uh, McGovern talking about that. Okay, we got iBuy Power now. Not the best uh, reputation when it comes to a company in terms of their like customer service slash build quality slash uh, you know being delivered built well. All gaming PCs. Let's go. So we got all gaming PCs. We got some deals of the days. They're too expensive though. What the heck? They're still using Ryzen 5 3600s in almost fourteen hundred dollar builds here. Um, so yeah, now I, and it's sold out. <laughs> what? <laughs> sold out one terabyte. Okay, 3060 Ti in uh, 1350 builds, not bad actually. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, so everything here looks good except for the CPU choice, in my opinion. I mean, come on, 5600Xs have gone down to like 140 bucks, I think I've seen on sale. So, um, yeah, <laughs> well, the 3600 is hard to put a price on it, 100 bucks is probably the used price. Uh, actually, no, it's probably a little bit more than that. But you're not finding 3600 for $100 on Amazon. Their prices are stupid because they're a generation old. But, okay, let's see. Handpicked gaming PCs, the value gaming, the price. We got we to gotta cap this at 1000 Do they even have a $1,000 PC? Here we go. Ryzen Gaming Starter PC. Ooh, they have the elusive Ryzen 3 3100. Jellyman with the... How did you get the highlighted comment on here? Current specs are Ryzen 3600 to 2080. Do you recommend waiting for the newest Ryzen? Yeah, I would say if you already have a 3600 right now, uh, wait for the new Ryzen uh, processors. The 7000 series, not 6000. Um, but yeah, I would wait. We're, we're close enough now where if you have a capable PC and you're not like... It's not hindering your ability to game or do if you're doing professional work or whatever on it just keep it for now it's just the people that i generally tell not to wait is the ones who just don't have a pc at all because there's a difference using a slightly underpowered pc for the next couple of months versus having no pc for the next couple of months right so it, it all depends on the person and their situation but yeah all right so 3100 8 gigabytes of ram really uh what else you got in here 6500 xt so already i buy power fails like big time let's see what they have for their 1200 i saw another pc uh 1099 6500 again 6500 so all their builds under 1100 dollars has a 6500 xt which is very bad so we'll keep this up for i buy power but nope so we haven't really found anything so far we found things that are okay value but nothing great all right we got aes tech gaming what are we looking at here so i'm looking at build to order pcs uh, if you've been shopping for pre-built and you already know that buying a mystery, most pre-built companies. So ready to ship versus build to order. I would have thought, uh, I guess, so they don't have anything ready to ship. When I see completed builds that are configured already, that's my, that one is what looks like ready to ship. But okay, so let's just go with this. What is the lowest priced one? Can I sort? There is no sorting by price on this website. But we've got, so I think Shauner said AES uh, was the one that he knows or he's a friend of and has good value. So, all right, let's take a look at this. Ooh, we got 1150. So we've got 1150 and the build uses this Antec case. Uh, looks like a micro, is that micro or mid tower? Uh, let's see, warranty 30 day and then one year on labor and RMA service hardware issues, okay. But the standard 30 days for like, if, um, for defective exchange, okay. So 12400F, got it. 
V660, 3060, 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte, uh, 650 watt EVJ Supernova, and you get some cable extensions from uh, Asia Horse. You could pro hopefully they let you choose the color if you want to do a different color. Because putting black cable extensions, they do look a little bit better, but it's not that different than from you know this one's gonna already have black cables. Um, let's see the Antec DP31. Okay, so everything on this list, price aside looks like good pairings we we have a minimum of 16 gigabytes of ram we do have a one terabyte ssd uh we have a supernova 650 power supply 12400f uh yeah i have no complaints about this for 1150 um it's out of stock but you could probably put in an order and if you don't mind waiting uh th this price doesn't seem that bad yeah uh let's compare it to let's see what did nzxt have here so nzxt was a hundred dollars cheaper and they are two gens old on the um, the processor, so also your motherboard is going to be cheaper. Uh, what else here? Uh, the AES system has a one terabyte instead of 500 gigabytes. Uh, anything else? Okay, yeah, there's something wrong with NGXT's website. Wattage, 500 watts model, 650 watt gold. So. People don't even know what they're getting here. But uh, for an extra $100, I think there is value in this AES um, system. Hey, uh, Brexy X Gaming. No worries. Have a good rest of your night. And thanks for attending the stream for however long you were able to. Okay, so this AES Tech Gaming uh, 1150 for the specs are actually pretty decent. Um, it might be better than anything we've, seen. yeah, I think it is better than anything we've seen so far. So there, I'm going to put them, I'm going to move the tab forward. Thank you for the reminder, Extreme Zone, for drinking water. Part of, um, right now my health too. My throat and mouth are just constantly dry no matter how much water I drink. So, uh, that kind of sucks because every morning when I wake up, it's just like, it, I'm like that SpongeBob episode where they're in Sandy's tree house and it's like, water, I need water. But okay, so we got AES there. Next we have ABS. I think ABS from Newegg probably has the better pricing, huh? Because they have like deals and such. See all series. Let's see. Uh, the way that they sort this out. Okay. Single stick of eight gigabytes. Pretty common in pre-builds. Just ask David. Yeah. Um, which kind of sucks. Like, what is the reason for SIs doing that? I, I mean, obviously, we know the reason is to cut corners and make as much profit as much as possible. But I think if you are a system integrator and you s simply just put 16 gigabytes or, you know, whatever the at the time, uh, like, bare minimum recommended should be, not bare minimum, but, um, like, to give a good experience, you will develop a reputation for pre boats that, you know, don't skip out on RAM and SSD and things like that. And I think that should be good for business. Like, if you're a company where people can't poke holes in what you're selling, because you do give the one terabyte SSD, you do give, like, you know, quality uh, power supplies, and you do give enough RAM, then I, I would only think that, you know, your reputation uh, and will, like, help get you more business than the little bit you save from you know, skipping out on RAM. Jason Wimmer says, I've only sold eight gigabytes when it's a cheaper DDR3 machine. Otherwise, 16 gigabytes, 3,600 megahertz is standard. Uh, on the cheaper DDR3 machines, yeah, it is kind of annoying to, to now find like older RAM sometimes. Um, so I can see that. But, and also if it's cheaper then you know, what is the other person gonna expect? Eight gigabytes is enough to, to run uh, some of basically the os as well as uh some of the lighter titles even in the heavy titles you should be fine without too much stuttering um and you there are ways to prevent stuttering like with frame capping and things like that God, abs come on uh is there a way for me just to see also your challenger okay sure So I guess I'm just going to look at their Challenger series, which, okay, this is about the price range we want to see. <clears throat> $900. So we got a 3600 with a 1650. Oof. That's 
1650 that is a very it's not crazy low end it could still play some games at 60 fps at like probably low to medium settings but that's not what you want to see i you you would rather spend the extra 50 bucks and get a 1660 super here which will be well worth it um so let's take a look at and then actually this one right here 3050 so this one's a thousand for 12 400f Foxtrot says, I am a new PC builder. Should I go 11th gen Intel if I want to keep a budget? Um, what's your budget? If you have a thousand bucks, you sh you should be able to fit in uh, 12th gen. But if you want to save money, take a look at both 10th gen and 11th gen. Uh, price out equivalent processors and you'll probably be using the same motherboard and see how much you can save between the two. I usually don't recommend 11th gen chips. It's just not worth uh, either go like 10th for the savings that they have. If, if you're on a budget, especially the i3s and stuff or go 12th gen. 12th gen, I just saw the 12 100F I think is down to uh, uh, under 110 bucks. So that's a little bit better than the previous weeks when we saw them shoot up a little bit. So Okay, between these ones, I think just looking at yeah, these top four. Yeah, because you start to get into like this 1024 one. Why does this have a 1660 Super in it when this one has like a 3050? Oh, it's because this one's on sale. Okay. Well, it looks like we're going to have to look at this one because it's better value right now. But Newegg is always having sales. So I don't think this is like a once in a lifetime find, right? Uh, this I, I feel like this would be reflective of what you can find on Newegg from ABS. So yeah, looking at this one... Uh, we're looking at a 12400F RTX 3050 B660, okay, 512 SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, okay, 550 gold power supply. They're using uh, micro ATX in a mid tower, so you got all that space on the bottom here, uh, but that's not the end of the world. What, and it, okay, they chose something with Wi Fi enabled. Is that the motherboard? Yep, there's the two Wi Fi. Uh, Screws where you put the antenna in right there. Custom built PCs always have trash motherboards. Oh, pre-built always have trash motherboards. That I don't think they tell you what they put in here. Maybe the pictures can tell, but that might not even be the board that they're using. Extreme Zone 987. Do you think the new game engines and ray tracing coming on with 32 gigabytes of RAM be the new gaming standard over 16 gigabytes? Uh, I think it depends on what you define as the standard. Is having like maybe 5 to 10% less performance from 16 and 32, would you consider that the transition point be between what standard? Or is it when 16 gigabytes for most modern titles uh, have like a stuttery kind of like freezing experience, which is what uh, like 4 gigabytes had. I think from 4 to 8 was one of the biggest like noticeable ones that I saw. But... Yeah, so it depends on what your, your definition is. Um, I think 16 gigabytes will still work for a while, but at the same time, prices are dropping. You can get 32 gigabytes for like as low as 90 to 80 something to 90 bucks nowadays. So um, it depends on if you're trying to build a super budget system or if you have a flexible budget and can spend more on things like that in the SSD. But um, I, I don't think 32 gigabytes is going to be standard for at least a couple of years still. I think 16 gigabytes can still deliver a very playable uh, experience. It might be lower than what the system would have compared to 32, but it's not going to be like unplayable. Okay. Um, so for this system, a thousand bucks. I mean, I'm liking 12th gen Intel. Not a lot of the other companies aren't giving you that. They're giving you like previous gen stuff. Or like an AMD, uh, but the 3050 is the only thing that concerns me here, because we're see we saw other builds with 3050s as low as like 850 bucks. So yeah, um, not we're seeing what we're seeing here is a lot of stuff that's not horrible value. Like you know we're we're seeing stuff that's not like overkill or artesian and stuff like that where they have a huge markup on what the build fee for a complete system is but we're not seeing anything that jumps out that says like oh my god 
but like if you need a system buy this right now which is what i'm looking for uh so yeah abs not too impressed by them it seems everything seems pretty standard oh this was an open box that's why it was 900 but this thing has a 1650 in it so i would say that's not the best value at all uh so we just looked at abs so i'm not gonna look at the website all right build redux because no, i don't think there are any builds with the 3080 in it for under 2000 bucks um i think that like to get that you would need around 23 to 2500 dollars from what i've seen but we can do that later on uh on the twitter part of the stream wow we're almost already an hour in the stream there's so many pre-built companies and all right we gotta move this faster hey there's me on redux's website Again, a lot of what these companies, when you're a brand new company, I would say charge less for builds and then slowly increase the price as your, you know, the demand gets higher and y you adjust for supply and demand, right? When you're fresh, brand new, and you just need to move systems and get your name out there, I think uh, a lot of companies should have very low build fees on, you know, on top of the, whatever the standard part cost is. That's what Build Redux actually did. When I, pri when I did the review of their system and I priced out every single part in the build, um, they actually had only a $50 build fee, but they've since raised their prices. But they raised their prices after, you know, a bunch of people probably started buying their systems and uh, they balanced the supply and demand that way. But yeah, when you're a brand new company, you cannot expect to be able to charge like two, three, four hundred dollars um, because then you're not going to get any customers. You're not going to be able to get reviews. Okay, what th does their build really start at $1,400? Because if so, I'm not even going to look at this. Build Redux. Th uh, okay, let me see. Uh, best sellers. Okay, those are the best sellers. Do I have to build from scratch to try to get it under 1000 More water reminders. Thank you for everyone for the water reminders. I appreciate it. Hey, what's up, King Brandon 913 Hope you're having a good night. Okay, so I pick my top three games. Let's just say Apex. Uh, let's say Fortnite and Roblox because I want to find something that's reasonable. Oh no, yeah, you can't get anything under fourteen fifteen. Let me see if I just pick their this system and I just downgrade everything. Actually, okay, and then we're gonna talk about this again because. I'm never gonna start stop talking about this. Companies that list out what they're charging for every single component and then what their build fee. Wow, their build fee went up from 50 to 75 and I think I've already seen it at 99, but I forgot that they did that. So yeah, their build fee is 99, which uh, honestly is not that, it's actually really good. Most other people companies I've seen, build fees are generally 150 to like 250. So 99 bucks right here um okay so that's the build fee but if you look at the prices 12 f for 170 uh you could probably get it for cheaper but that's like on a sale or something but this is i guess a reflective any day of the week price 16 gigabytes for 70 bucks i don't know what ram they're giving you they don't say so that it gives them flexibility but 70 bucks i mean you're talking about like corsair rgb kits because there's cheaper stuff out there but i don't know if they're using the cheap stuff Hyper Evo 212 for 35 bucks. Eh, I'm not a fan of the 212 Evo for that price, but that's how much they go for. Uh, I guess the RGB version. Joel says, traded my RX 6600 for a Quadro M4000 plus 200 CAD. Was that a spare card or is that like your, your main system card? Sorry, I can't remember what all the viewers' uh, personal systems are, unfortunately. But, um... Let's see. Uh, and then you got a okay. The motherboard that looks fine. The case TD 500 99 bucks. They do charge you. I think you can change the windows. Where's the? Where do I? There used to be a way to custom. Ah, customize. Here we go. So this is what I also like to. Uh, info. Ubuntu. So I think they used to. For a small amount of time, oh wow, they still charge 30 bucks for this. No support, but you get the install. So if you want to save on Windows, uh, you can get this from them. 
before they did this though they did i think they installed unactivated windows there must be something in like the fine print of uh windows or something that the system integrators aren't offering that anymore or for the ones that did um i don't know if it's because they have like an actual legit business as opposed to like us at home doing unactivated windows but okay but you can lower the price by doing that um power supply cheapest that's the cheapest there sixty dollars for sixty dollars for a 500 gigabyte nvme that better be like a samsung evo because most other 500 gigabyte ones are like 40 to 50 bucks um memory yep that's the cheapest there so redux the pricing just based on all the components doesn't look too bad and their build fee isn't too bad um oh actually the graphics card how did i skip that yeah there what is this price how much can we get how much can we get a 3060 for? Does anyone know off the top of their heads? Um, 3060. Why is it showing $250 on NVIDIA's website? Three, oh, can we really get it for 330 I doubt it. Nope. It's not even on there for that little. Tech ability. Uh, oh, that's a 3060 Ti. Uh, wait, I'm supposed to look at EVGA. Sorry, NVIDIA's website is not the one to look at. Uh, products. How much are they going for there? Around 350 Really? Where? We're talking about online retailers here, not offer up. <clears throat> uh, hey, it's Joel. Gotta run now and help my daughter. I'll game you later, Chris. That's why I love seeing people in the community talking outside of, you know, the stream and outside of just what we do here. But have a good night, Joe. All right. So the cheapest RTX 3060 is this single fan card. Ew. For 340 bucks. Not even from Newegg's, from Platinum Micro, which is a top rated seller. So that's fine. It's just this isn't ideal. The next card, the cheapest one is the OC Eagle for 370 bucks. Okay. So yeah, build Redux. I don't know what card you're throwing in here, but to claim... Everything looks good up until here. So if you take a hundred bucks off of here, put it to the build fee, then they're just like every other pre-built website. 470. You could... Mm, I think there were RTX 3070s at some point in the last couple of months that went for 470. So yeah, Redux, not good value. And we can't even get close to under a thousand bucks. So... That's not good for them. Okay, here we go. Costco. Everyone's favorite place to get cheap hot dogs, pizzas, and surprisingly has random deals on pre-builds. I've the last time I've never brought it bought a pre-built from Costco, but my parents did before I made money for our at-home gaming computers. The the main gaming computers that got me into like PC gaming and like MMORPGs and things like that. It was a Costco pre-built compact Presario with some really old like GeForce MX 400 series graphics card. Um, and yeah, I've never bought a pre-built from Costco ever since. But just taking a look at these specs for $1,000, I'm pretty impressed. Except there's a huge caveat buying this. Um, so you're getting an i7-12700. As well as an RTX 3060. That that's those are some fatty specs. Like that, those are really good specs. Under a thousand dollars, it's unheard of. Wow, this build might actually win. Yeah, the, with the rotisserie chicken for five bucks, that's their loss leader or whatever it's called. Get you into Costco and buy other stuff. Um, same with the hot dogs, I think. Okay. So this is this is only valid from 820 to 828. So till the end of the week. But what else we have in here? Specifications. One terabyte hard drive. Is there an SSD in here? Please tell me there is. SSD 512. Hey, and this comes with a 512 SSD and a one terabyte hard drive. Um 16 gigs of RAM, which isn't uh, which is like pretty much expected. So everything, and it comes with a uh, keyboard and mouse too. So if you want it, you know, a cheap keyboard and mouse, just to get you started. Like if you're buying a system for like a young kid, they don't need a hundred dollar mechanical keyboard or like a expensive gaming mouse just to start off anyways. This you can buy, hook up to your TV at home and you're ready to go. But specs wise, this is very impressive. That processor alone is like 300 something bucks. We just saw the 3060 
was like at least 370 if you don't want a crappy one the only thing is again Len so this is a lenovo is the idea center their internals are gonna be proprietary um most likely let me see if i can find anything on this if i can find like any pictures by the way if any if you guys want me to take a look at anything on twitter now is the time to post it so go to twitter post whatever link or whatever you wanted me to look at there were some people in the chat who were talking about that uh tag me at neuron budget and hashtag no stream so i can see it in my notifications uh when we get to that in a little bit but um okay can we see the internals of this thing doesn't look like google images has anything no oh newegg has this too but they're selling it for seventeen hundred dollars Yeah, Costco, that's a good point. They also have a great return policy. If you bought this, played with it for like a couple of weeks and didn't like it, you can box it up and return it to them. No issues. So the, the only thing, so this is phenomenal value in terms of like all the specs. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I'm okay with the 500 gigabyte hard uh, SSD because they also threw in a one terabyte uh, hard drive. I don't prefer it. I would rather take that hard drive out and just upgrade that to one terabyte. But we're talking about $1,000 here. I7 12700 RTX 3060. The big caveat and limitation is upgrade path. I'm pretty sure when you open this thing up, it's gonna have a proprietary motherboard and the internals and the power supply is probably not the best. But um yeah, this specs wise, I think this is like the top spec to performance PC that we've seen. Toasty Bros just did a video on this Costco PC. All right, let's take a look at Toasty Bros on YouTube. Hey, what's up, guys? Jack, oh, put the mute on. Is it hey, right it's here? Going, guys, Jack. Okay, so let's take a look on the internals. Uh, what is that? Why is there so much stuff going on on the internals of the system? All right, one second. Someone just rang the doorbell, and I'm not sure my wife is awake to get it. All right, sorry about that. Di what what are we seeing? Dipping pizza into some sodas. Okay. Uh, so let's look at. Wait, how much did they show of the build? Because they got into the benchmarks right. Yeah. So it definitely looks, from what I can see, there's a bunch of crap going on inside this case. Why? Why is there all this like metal brackets and bracing and stuff? I guess for shipping that might help. Oh, look at the back. Yeah, that definitely screams proprietary. Uh, the the oh, and then we got like just basic green PCB on the motherboard. So yeah, uh, that's the only thing about this. If you're, this is a very capable system. But when it comes time to upgrade, like in a few years or however long your typical upgrade cycle is, you're likely going to just, mm, you know, just upgrade completely from the system. You probably take the graphics card out, try to sell that, or put it into another build or like a backup build or something. But uh, you might be able to save the CPU, but you would have to buy a new motherboard because this motherboard, I'm pretty sure, is the connectors for like power button and all that stuff is. Uh, I would guess, based on the other Lenovo's that I've seen, it's not going to work with like every case out there. It's not standard, but yeah. Yeah, so then you're pretty much leaving the power supply case and motherboard behind if if you do take everything out of here. Okay, so I'd say great value. I would actually probably recommend this to a friend that had a thousand dollars, honestly. Um I would hope for them to be local to me so that I could at least be able to help out if anything goes wrong. But yeah, lots of value to be had here. But it comes at a price. It's 
Uh, Skytech Gaming pre-built PCs. Okay, we gotta move along quicker. All right, Skytech. We're just gonna go up to the 1,000. Here's the thing. You ever look at websites or like system integrators or whatever, and there are multiple price points of a product that you can buy. And somehow as you go up, like either the specs are even worse or just wait, like the value just drops dramatically. Like I'm looking to spend a thousand dollars. There should be no reason for any of the PCs uh, that cost less to give a much better value proposition or even better specs. So just looking at these, I like how you can see all the specs here without having to click into it. So we can, this actually makes it go by a little bit faster. So this, oh wow, they have a lot of, geez, they have so many builds on Skytech. But we're looking at, let's look at the $1,000. Oh my, there's five PCs I can buy for a thousand dollars about 3600 ryzen 5 3600 a 10 400f a 10 400f uh ryzen 5 3600 and a 10 400f and then between the 900 and a thousand dollar builds what graphics card so skytech at least puts in amd cards yeah like between these two um we're seeing two $1,000 builds. One of them, so it's either a 10th Gen i5 or a Ryzen 5, uh, which is fine. Uh, those are competitors. And then this one has a 1660 Super, and then this one has a 6600 in it. Then, oh, this one has a one terabyte SSD. So I guess you have a choice here, but why not just configure the best system and not be so different? Like, why does this one have a 500 gigabyte SSD? I know that 1660 Super costs roughly the same as a 6600 so why is everything else across the board not the same extreme zone says almost bought a sky tech i've heard good things about sky tech i just haven't seen it really so which of these builds for a thousand bucks would you say is worth the money because all of them yeah, most of them has 1660... Oh, here's a 1660 Ti in it. This one... Okay, we, we can break the budget a little bit because going up to 1050, I'm seeing a 6600 XT, which I think is actually way more worth it. So let's take a look at this. The Blaze 3.0. Uh, I might just have to eat my own words because as I said, or as I was just saying, I heard a lot of good things about Skytech Gaming, but I haven't really seen specific examples. This actually is... Might actually be pretty decent. So we do have a 10 400f a uh, little bit older for cpu two gens old but still very capable uh fantex metallic gear case that's fine stock cooler that's fine rgb fans three of them v560 board um 16 gigs of ram one terabyte hard drive and a 6600 xt this right here and it has wi-fi um a lot of the times companies do cut corners by not including wi-fi uh and you know if you're Actually, most people that I, I know now that are getting the PCs or for the kids and stuff, they need Wi-Fi. Not a lot of people have their houses wired to have hardline connections going to any room or whatever. So Wi-Fi is very big in helping like a PC sell. And uh, so some of the other companies that have lower prices, they won't have Wi-Fi. So every taking a look at the specs here, though, I, I think this is actually a pretty decent price for a pre-built. Uh, 10400F. 6600 XT, one terabyte, you know, the full one terabyte hard drive, uh, Wi-Fi, and your standard labor warranties and stuff like that. Um, I mean, what have we seen earlier that is around this price that is this good? Yeah, so I actually recently uh, sent out a computer that... Um, the one that actually has a 1070 Ti in it. I had to buy one of those like $15 dongle Wi-Fi, uh, like USB dongles because the motherboard didn't have built-in Wi-Fi and the uh, the person requested it because their house, you know, most people now that aren't super tech savvy, they just use Wi-Fi for internet, you know, all around the house. Yeah, so 1050 SkyTech, not too bad. 
All right, we're going to have to speed this up. We're going to skip Amazon, sorry, because I think a lot of this stuff is going to be like SkyTech sells on. Yeah, there's a SkyTech. There's iBuy Power. We've already seen those. Uh, okay, so Digital Storm. Boom, starting at $1,000. Perfect. This is what I'm looking for. They just have a system that says starts at 1000 I can click it, and we can quickly look at the specs. <sighs> Why not just put the specs here? Why put up to eight core processors? View configs. So we're looking at the 999 one. Need some water. Dr. Christopher Kunin is the, or he goes by the father of Wi-Fi. So if you have Wi-Fi questions, you can ask him anything. <laughs> I just volunteered you, Chris. We got a 12100F B660 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of RAM. They have their own digital storm. Why do they have a 700 watt power supply in here? Is that necessary? 700 watt net power supply. Okay, connectivity. Uh, we do have 500 gigabyte SSD. And a 3050 for a thousand bucks. Not impressive at all. Yeah. I mean, that they're like a dime a dozen. Uh, we're looking for either AMD or, um, or a lower price. If you're going to be sitting right at that $1,000 price mark. All right, we got, we're going to skip GameStop too because we, we're seeing CyberPower, iBuyPower, SkyTech, and things like that. So we're going to skip that. Um, what is this? Main Gear. Quick Ships. Look at, let's look at their Quick Ships. Hardline PC and consoles only way. Yeah, uh, I hardline. I, I don't play a console, but uh, my desktop is definitely hardline right here. I cannot, my, like, we have uh, three stories because of the basement. So through that many floors, the Wi-Fi in the office upstairs just does not work well. Okay, quick ship gaming desktops. They don't have, main gear does not have anything around the $1,000 price point. View all. This is all. This is all they have. Okay, well, main gear is a little bit more expensive. Quick look at their cheapest one at $1,600. What are we even... Oh, $1,500 it looks like. Oh my goodness. We're looking at $1,500 for a 3060 Ti and 5600X. That's not horrible. For $1,500, I would have liked to see a 3070. And there are other system integrators that have that. So yeah, main gear, a little too expensive for our quest today. Origin, I'm pretty sure they're going to be pretty expensive too. Reminder, if you just joined the stream, we are about to get into the Twitter portion of it in a little bit here as soon as I get through the rest of this. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, but we pulled up like 20 pre-built companies. There are so many that... Um, it's just taking a while to get through all of them to try to find the one with the best value. Right now, Costco, I think, is leading the pack. pre built from Lenovo aren't the best, but man, an i7 is hard to beat. Okay, does Origin, I already know it's really expensive. They're not going to have anything under a thousand. Um, and they don't have a quick way of searching for it with sorting either. Yeah, everything is like 2000, 2000, 2000. All right, we're going to skip that. Phoenix PCs. All right. All right, so Phoenix PCs, they recently decreased their price for their lowest entry level one. So good timing that they did that before I reviewed it and not after. But $880, what are you getting here? You're getting a 12, 12100F, a V2 cooler, a V660 motherboard, 500 uh, gigabyte SSD, and a 1660 Super. So we're seeing a, any... Most systems that are like around the 850 to 900 from all the system integrators, they're, they're either putting in 1660 variants, so 1660 Super or TI, and then like either an i3 or an old i5. So, um, and then they have a D, why would you want a DDR5 upgrade this low of a build? But yeah. <laughs> Reverge says, Costco leading pack in jewelry, vacations, booze, cigs, and pre built Dude, Costco. And once I retire, I think I would like to work for Costco. Good pay, good benefits. They're closed on most major holidays. Every time I go to Costco, every employee in there just seems like they're pretty happy to be there. Unlike some other places that I've shopped at. And yeah, the membership means that you don't have, you know, there's a barrier to entry. Not anyone can go to Costco. So that sounds a little elitist. You have to have a membership to go there. 
<laughs> which weeds out like a lot of the people who may be like, you know, horrible customers or Karens, but it's the truth, I think. Um, okay. So, uh, where are we at here? So yeah. Uh, so this build, seeing the price drop is actually pretty good under 900 bucks. Uh, not like the best value, but it puts it where it should be amongst the competition. And I'll say more in the review video. All right. We got Star Forge now. <laughs> They got their did it just go straight to the one thousand dollar pc star forge we got the 11400 f 6600 xt oh, okay here's a good question i think star forge i still think they have a lot of value yeah costco gra gas prices has been clutch the only thing is so they always have a bunch of lanes uh but at my costco when you go at peak times it's just the lines are crazy Okay, so yeah, I think the my opinion on Star Forge is still the same. See, uh, this is really good value, and they don't they pretty much have everything you would want in a thousand dollar. Except for I would have liked to see a, a one terabyte SSD, but you know what? They're giving you a sixty six hundred X. Not that you're not getting this performance from any of the other system integrators, except actually no, the sixty six hundred XT beats the thirty sixty from Costco, but. The NVIDIA, people are going to be like, they want their RTX or DLSS. So it, it's kind of like a sideways, um, side grade almost. All right. Uh, we're not going to look at Power GPU today. Maybe next week, if you guys can remind me. Here's AES that we already looked at. Okay. So I closed out a bunch of them just because we ran out of time. So which one would you say is the best value PC? Maybe I can try to run a poll for which was the best value $1,000 or less PC. Okay, so Costco $1,000 i7-12. Uh, Starforge uh, $1,000 F400F and then a 6600 XT. Let me add more. Can I add more? No. It... Oh no. It's not letting me add more options because I have an add-on right here. Crap. Sorry, give me one second. <sighs> Copy and paste this over here. All right, what else do we have? So we had the Costco. And we have the Star Forge. So here's the Costco one. Here's the Star Forge one. Um... Skytech Blaze. Okay, here we go. We'll put the Skytech in here too. Uh, what is it? 1050, and this had a 10400F, all right, 6600XT, and then what else? All the, pre wait, uh, Cryptic, Costco $500 PC because a 1660 Ti came up in every build. Wait, there's a $500 Costco PC? Let's take a look at it real quick after this. Um, what else did we have that was worth even mentioning? Not HP Omen, not Alienware, NZXT, nope, 8 gigs of RAM. I'm not going to put you on the list, NZXT, for that. Oh, here's, uh, oh, NZXT 1050. I think that would be the next one. This one was horrible value for a 65 XT in it. And then this links, what the heck was in this one? uh 1200 f and graphics cards at 3050 okay we're gonna put the nzxt because for 1050 getting a 3060 i don't think is that bad 1050 so 1400 f rtx 3060 all right oh I which one would you buy or which one would you recommend to your closest friends and family to try to get them the best deal if it was between these four remember the lenovo you're you're setting them up with a lot of proprietary well not a lot of proprietary parts but at least a motherboard case and uh potentially the power supply if the connectors are proprietary wow and the the thing is, Costco doesn't always have this deal. I think this is a Slick Deals front page, like, hot fire deal. Um, 
But yeah, I guess a lot of people in the who are at least voting, anyways, value specs over like aesthetics because I think this is probably the ugliest one because all the other ones uses like normal cases and might have RGB fans and stuff. Uh, but yeah, people are very valuing specs a lot. Um, because that's the only reason the Lenovo is winning. Um, because had it not been, if that was like a, let's say an i5 or a 3050, um, even at a lower price, I would say steer clear from it just because of that, that motherboard and whatever the heck was inside the case, uh, on the Toasty Bros video. What was all that stuff? So it's just like unnecessary bloat slash bracing, I guess for shipping, but. Shauner is a big aesthetics guys, but at one point specs are just too much to overcome with looks. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I would say I'm I'm actually not that huge into aesthetics. So, um, but with the Lenovo, it's not the aesthetics isn't the issue. Actually, this case doesn't look that bad. And I, I guess the tempered glass not being there is fine too. Um, it's just that motherboard is the only thing I'm pretty worried about. Um, All right, but while we finish voting on that and we start going to Twitter side of things, uh, gaming PC. So th apparently there's a $500 gaming PC according to Kryptonic HD. Yeah, don't let Zach... Dude, yeah, Zach is very much... I, I attended the stream the other day, um, but yeah, Zach is very much an aesthetic over everything. For me, it's like when you have a budget build, because I think Zach buys... Uh, cable uh custom extension or not custom extensions but extensions and stuff like that in bulk right whereas um, typically when you go to amazon you're going to be spending anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks depending on the brand for extensions a normal person would because you're not buying like a bunch directly from the company like if i'm building a 500 dollars pc 30 bucks could be spent so much like in so many ways better than getting some extensions that look slightly better i would rather upgrade the ssd from if i was going 500 to one terabyte or uh, i would rather get a better case because with a case that you could you know you can use a case for like two to three upgrade cycles so a case is a good investment that can last you a long time um maybe uh more ram uh if for whatever reason you need 32 gigs of ram higher tier power supply so yeah, for budget builds that have like an actual cap, like, you know, you're trying to stay below like 500 bucks. You're not trying to do 530, you're not trying to do 550. And you, you know, where you have to cut corners, you can't fit a lot of the aesthetics things in there. Uh, wow. Okay. So the Costco, it was leading by like seven, it was at like 70 something percent. Um, but it looks like Starforge caught up a little bit. Not many people like the Skytech build, which is fine. Um, and then the NZXT build has some votes as well. But it's a Starforge and Costco, which Starforge was my pick before the stream. Uh, just because of what, you know, once they uh, upgraded it in the past week due to the backlash. And then, yeah, the Costco one, a um, thousand bucks. This, this is really hard to beat. But all right, where are these $500 PCs? Can I sort by lowest price? <clears throat> I'm not seeing them. What are you talking about, Kryptonic? Our stupid, it only show PCs. I don't even see anything that's $500. Can, do you have a link? You should be able to post links. You're a mod. Yeah, if, if I'm building a build like for myself, that I know I'm going to be using and stuff. Sure, spending extra 20 bucks for extensions is not a big deal. But if you're like, I guess for flipping, you should do an experiment. Post two builds, one with extensions for the increased price and one without extensions with the, you know, have both of them side by side. Exact same pictures, everything, except for the extensions removed. See which one sells faster. <laughs> All right, we got... Kryptonic HD with the $500 system. Here it is. Yeah, why didn't this pop up when I put gaming PC? It's maybe I had to put gaming desktop. 
All right, 500 bucks. You got 3,600X. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. So where are they cutting corner? Oh, eight gigs of memory, which is not what you want to see. You want to see at least double for both these. But a 1660 Ti, huh? What are those going for? Not to say that they're worth $300. I'm just trying to get a, a base. Yeah, they're... Mm, 270 here. But this is probably... I wonder if it's like a proprietary one. Thanks for the reminder of the water. Okay. So let's say this is 500 bucks. And then you buy yourself a 500 gig hard drive for uh, SSD for 50 bucks. And then you upgrade the memory. You a 16 gig kit's 45 and you can sure run this one in the the other channel to have 24 gigs of memory which is kind of weird but that would be less than 50 bucks as well so for 600 before tax and all that stuff by adding another hundred dollars into the ssd 600 bucks for a 3 3600x and a gtx 1660 ti that is actually better than all these other companies that are selling like 850 dollar pcs that have a 1660 in it um the only thing is, is if you're not a fan of this uh, case from ASUS, uh, I, I'm usually not a fan from like the the OEM type or pre-built cases from companies. They usually don't have that good of airflow and they're kind of weird shaped. Like what the heck is this thing? I like the way it sticks out. But yeah, this is actually pretty insane value. Um, I don't know what kind of motherboard they have in here or um, they're not going to list it on here. Yeah, I don't know what motherboard they're going to have or what power supply. Yeah, what is this? Why is this just sticking out <laughs> and taking up more space unnecessarily? It's an ugly case, but I mean, for 500 bucks, it's hard to complain because you can easily add in 100 bucks worth of upgrades to the memory and SSD and get a baller $600 build. And, it, you know, this is brand new. I'll, you got to compare new to new and used to use. I don't like when people say, oh, you could build something yourself using used components. That's that's not the same thing. <laughs> Costco has great customer service and you get a better warranty for buying brand new. So I don't think you could, I don't think we could beat this anywhere though. Um, this is probably, I mean, it's hard to compare to a thousand dollar build with a 3060 and a 12700. But this is, I would recommend this to like a friend or family member and give them links for SSD and RAM. I think it's really good value. Holy crap. Okay. So we're going over the Twitter side of things now just because I said I would tonight. And we're already an hour and a half in the stream. That took a while. But it looks like the clear winner is going to be based on the vote and just based on value. Come on, let's be serious. It's gonna be the Lenovo Think Center or Idea Center rather five, but this gets an honorary mention. Last minute uh, submission by Kryptonic. This is actually pretty good value um, for the non-builders out there. So, yeah, I think those are the two winners tonight. What's the timestamp? Oh, okay, about an hour and a half. I need to timestamp it in the uh, in the description afterwards. But yeah. Yeah, Costco proving why they are, uh, you know, one of the top companies out there with regards to everything. Prices, uh, how they treat their employees, etc. <laughs> All right, let's get to Twitter. I don't even know how many submissions there are. Um, let's see. Oh, you submitted it here, Luis. Okay, so um, let's see. Oh, we got... Okay, so Chris is probably having dinner and stuff right now. So quick... Chris recently refurbished his Weber grill. He repainted it. He, I think he polished it and everything. So it looks really nice. And he's showing some ham. I've never cooked ham on a grill before. We actually don't eat much like big, you know, sliced roasted ham. If I'm eating ham, it's usually sandwich uh, cold cuts. Um, let's see. But that actually looks really good. Wow. Very clean, Chris. You're probably not on the stream right now. You're enjoying dinner, but thanks for submitting that. Wait, smoked pork chop? No way that's pork chop, is it? Ah, that might actually be pork chop. 
Yeah, that doesn't that totally look like ham? If pork or chicken? Uh, I think we, chicken. We do chicken way more. Uh, yeah, I think it's more versatile for what we make. Like all the different curries you can do it with, like Japanese, uh, Thai curry, uh, Indian curry. Like chicken, you can do with every curry. Pork, I wouldn't say you could. <laughs> I think it's a little strange on like Indian curry, for example, but um, let's see. All right, so Kryptonic posted this one here. Uh, so thanks for posting that, Luis. All right, De Demon Raptor. Finally finished it. Went for the 12600K stuff. 12400 took me about 14 hours. Huh, 14 hours. Um, If you're troubleshooting and stuff, I guess I know people who have taken that long to build a PC. Made a few mistakes, like directly connecting some fans to the motherboard at the wrong spot. Burnt the RGB. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's take a look at this. <laughs> you burnt the RGB out of directly connecting fans on the motherboard at the wrong spot. Did you accidentally connect the three pin? Or like, did you switch the ARGB versus non-ARGB, which is going to be the 12 volt and the 5 volt headers? I've heard of that happening, but... Most of your stuff should be addressable RGB, so that's going to be the lower 5 volt. And that the connectors on those, unless you're using an extension, they typically have one of the pins blocked off. So you shouldn't be able to plug that into a 12 volt RGB connector. Now, that's um, unless you use an extension, then usually the extensions don't block off that hole. But um, let's see. Uh, but congrats on finally finishing your build, Demon Raptor. It's looking pretty nice. Are these the two fans right here that are burnt out? The RGB got burnt out from. Um, so you're lucky because I've heard people who connected RGB connectors into the wrong spot. They burnt their motherboards out. So it sounds like the only thing that got damaged in your case was the fans. Um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise the build looks uh, pretty nice. Let's take a look at... Let's look at this cable management. This is an odd spot. Okay, let me take a look at what you're cooling. Oh, you don't post enough details. Um, I'm trying to see where your AIOs are connected. It's hard to see from these pictures. Okay, so it looks like you have an AIO up top, which is connected to uh, the CPU. Um, whether I can't tell if that's a... It, it, look, it must be a 360 because the fan heights are all the same. But you do have this 120 millimeter AIO at the front, which looks a little bit odd for your... Um, your graphics card but I'm trying to think would it be better placed at the rear it just looks weird to have this sticking here normally you just put 240s or 280s or 360s here um, so what's happening here is this graphics card is gonna get the coolest if you have if you don't have thermal issues then don't worry about it but um i think i would have put this near in the exhaust so then what's ha gonna happen is you get fresh air from the front intake and then uh they're gonna be fighting for the air at the top and the rear but that's fine you can have top and rear exhaust at the same time people do that all the time i just think aesthetically it looks weird here i'm pretty sure thermally this isn't um isn't an issue Um, and then th this is a Destiny character, right? We got the, the Funko or little figure in here. But yeah. Other than that though, um, yeah, I would say I would have put this at the rear and just let fresh air come in. Oh, and it looks like you're getting fresh air from the, the rear from these two fans too. So yeah, I would say just get a bunch of fresh air in and then that it should be fine exhausting at the top and the back. That's how I would have done it. But if you don't have thermal issues, no worries. Thanks for the submission though. And congrats on finally finishing it. Um... All right, we got Jonathan H. Any feedback on the listing I put on Jawa? Oh yeah, if you have like listings, that would be a good thing to look up too. If any of you are selling stuff on OfferUp, uh, Jawa, eBay, and you want me to take a look at the listing, maybe give it some coverage, um, I could do that too. We don't have that many submissions tonight, which works out perfectly because I'm getting very hungry. But, all right. 
we are looking at Jonathan Talks Hardware, Java Verified Seller, as well as a channel member in our in the community. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this build. We got a Rosewell case. I don't remember. I don't know all the cases off the top of my head, but let's see. Uh, so the build itself, uh, cable management is pretty clean. Uh, you're going to do so much when there's no grommets and you can see stuff through the back. Uh, let's see. Got an Intel stock cooler. You got a micro ATX board and a mid tower, but this is a $700 build. So I'm not going to be super stickler about it. Um, is this a used? I'm guessing this is a used build you put together or you did something to put these dents in this. Uh, there's some dents in the magnetic filter up top right here. So these are probably one of the first things that get damaged on a case that I've seen. Like if you accidentally look at this thing wrong, uh, it'll easily dent it, but that's fine. Again, it's a budget build. We haven't looked at the specs yet. Um, yeah, so this is used and new PC build. You got the Wi-Fi motherboard without the the uh, rear I.O. plate or cover. So uh, what else do we have here? Um, okay, so that's the build. Let's take a look at what you're selling it for. So we got a 10100F, 16 gigs of RAM, B460, DS3H. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. DS3H, stock Intel cooler. We've got a 250 gigabyte NVMe SSD with, okay. With the oh it's the black heatsink version one terabyte hard drive like i commented earlier um i 250 is just not enough space after you get windows on there and then maybe like main use programs gtx 1070 okay um and then oh it's a spectra d100 case 500 watt Enermax cybertron okay i don't remember off the top of my head what tier that is but assuming that's c tier or higher uh, that's fine. And then Rosewell RGB fans. Okay. So for 700 bucks and then shipping for me would have been 60 bucks. This seems, mm, and then what you're trying to make like maybe a hundred bucks on top of it for your labor fees. So I think these parts are still way cheaper than that. Like is this a brand new one terabyte drive. You can get one terabyte drives on eBay with like. You know decent hard drive health for maybe 20 bucks uh if it's used if it's new then it's gonna be more expensive probably around like 35 to 40 bucks but um i mean this is all used too so i would say this build i think the price should be closer to like 600. oh uh, you you've okay it's still a used drive though You hate those thumbnails at the end of the Jawa listing. So many icons and labels and it's too cluttered. Where, which, what are you talking about, Joel? Uh, which thumbnails at the end of the listing? You mean these ones right here? Or am I missing something else? When you click on this, no, there's not. Oh, you paid 500 and you're trying to flip this? Yeah, I mean, all the YouTube, wait, what? YouTube link icons and labels too clear. Am I missing something? Oh, the YouTube link. This. Oh, you don't like this? You're saying you don't like how this has a video that you can watch how these specs perform? This is one of the things I really liked about it because when you go to eBay or offer up and stuff, especially as a new buyer, you're not going to have any idea what these systems are capable of. So the ability to to add this, oh, the thumbnail. I see what you're saying. Sorry. Here, let me redo it. That's what he means. Okay. You don't like, oh, geez. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I hate these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I did not, totally did not read it that way. Let's see. Benchmark titles. So if you look at it, uh, let's see. Let's just put in like 3060. So yeah, there's like, there's this, which apparently this video did very well, so maybe that works out. But um, if we look at this, 1.1 million views. But this is one of those types of thumbnails right here that has everything in it. I am a personal fan of these style. Nope, this one also has too much crap on it. Ah, uh, why are they playing all the videos? 
I have a preference for the ones that show like, my goodness, I cannot find them. I'm not, oh, this one right here, these types of thumbnails, where it shows like, if you're comparing multiple cards and things like that, uh, yeah. Hey, what's up, Kennedy? You did join really late. We've got only like 20 minutes left on stream, so. Any members only perks, okay, let me talk about the membership perks. The membership perks, I'm treating it very much like Twitch subs. Um, I don't have, you know, extra videos that I do or anything like that. The main reason for membership is for people who want to support the channel and attend the stream regularly. And even if they don't attend the stream, you have access to like icons as well as the, the little, like the longevity badge when you leave a comment and you can use the, um, the emotes during the live streams as well as any comment you leave on the channel. Um, I, I don't like produce enough content to be able to give behind the scenes and things like that. So the membership is almost like my version of like, you know, setting up a Patreon, which so many people I know who have set up Patreons usually abandon it and never really like post much to it at all. So um, that's why when you sign up for them or when you do the membership, that's exactly what each of the membership tier levels tells you. It'll tell you, like I do see people who are members and I respond to them because it's easier to see, you know, your name highlighted as well as the icon. But yeah, I don't plan on putting like extra perks for members. It's mostly for the stream and for the emotes and stuff like that. And if you can't support the, you know, can't join the membership because it costs too much for nine of benefit, then feel free to just enjoy the content for free. This is for people who, you know, who want to support further uh, and it gives them little perks for fun during streams and um, leaving comments. I never intended it to be like, oh, you guys get a video a week in advance or anything like that. So you can call that me being lazy, but honestly, I don't know of anybody who actually keeps up with those types of systems uh, very well based on everything like I've seen. Maybe Linus because he has float plane and he makes like one video every day, but for most medium to smaller creators, I've, I've never seen someone successfully keep up a Patreon slash uh, something similar. Um, okay. So yeah, look at this build. Jonathan, you're buying it for a flip. You, I don't know how much work you put into this, um, but you bought it for 500 bucks. And you're trying to get $200 for not much work put into it. I think 500 for this build for the specs is actually, is not bad, but you're not going to be able to get $200 on top of it doing nothing to it. Uh, unless you, even if you added those hard drives and stuff. <laughs> Greenham Gaming, that's a name I haven't heard for a while. And uh, I think part of the reason is because he doesn't upload much, but Greenham Gaming his stuff was all over the place. It wasn't necessarily PC tech, like gaming PCs. He did consoles, like old Macs, iMacs, and things like that. And he posted very sporadically, but yeah. I mean, some people just move away from the YouTube hobby. All right, we got Luis with, I converted this $50 PC from an ice. This is a $50 PC that you bought. Um, breathing new life into it. The specs. You, okay, you bought the PC for 50 bucks and it came with the 4690K, which is actually not bad at all. 4690Ks probably cost 50 bucks. Um, you added in a GTX 1070 for 150. It came with the SSD, it came to 16 gigs. Yeah, so you got a crazy deal, 50 bucks. Um, and then you added RGB fan pack and it came with PSU. Didn't this come with a GTX 970? I think I saw that on your Twitter post. It came with this 970, didn't it? Yeah, for 50 bucks to come with a graphics card and a processor that can let you game, that's not bad at all. Hey, it's Joel says, I'm legit kicking myself for not putting time into YouTube and focus full time on Twitch streaming. I mean, you can always start. Actually, maybe you can't. If you have like a family and your time's like fully, you know, committed and stuff, maybe you can't just start. Actually, you can. You can always start a new hobby. You just need to, if you're that interested in it, you just need to reprioritize. Maybe drop another hobby that you have and try it. But yeah, YouTube is hard because I think a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of channels get like moderate success 
on like one viral video and they gain like a ton of subs and stuff but that doesn't last so if you are a new content creator and you start making videos and you don't get that virality near the beginning which i was fortunate enough to get uh my first video did really well uh and i got like a thousand subs in my first month but if you don't get that which right now is even harder to do because it's even more saturated than like when i started six years ago um if you're not having fun then it's not gonna last because uh a lot of people who are getting into it they're just you know they're not getting many views at all so you just have to enjoy doing it and you can't improve unless you do it so you might have to release like what mkbhd did release like 100 videos and not getting more than like 10 views on each video until you develop a rhythm to make higher quality videos that people do want to watch so yeah youtube is very difficult i am fortunate i got lucky um and yeah i'm not gonna ever say or uh i'm never not gonna appreciate the fact that i got lucky a lot of people just say oh put in hard work and you can make it uh it's part luck too sorry i was just on a a little rant there Fong Tran, which Fong Tran is the winner of the GTX 1080 and he built a PC with his son. Oh, here it is. He's actually, he posted it. Here's the PC I built for my son using the GTX 1080i1 from you. This is from the one, um, from the video, uh, like a month or two ago. Uh, so he built a 5600X M he has a micro center near him. So, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, cooler master, 120 millimeter AIO, 500 watt power supply, uh, 500 gig SSD Lianli 205M. I really like that case. But so yeah, there is the 1080 that I did the giveaway for. So it actually went to somebody. It wasn't like I scammed you guys with a fake giveaway. But there it is. What a beautiful Founders Edition card. This build looks pretty good too. Um, yeah. This man, the RGB for some reason looks really good in here with the t-force delta rgbs as well as this i don't know this isn't an infinity mirror but it is like a mirror type rgb uh pump block as well as the uh the rgb fan here this i think this all looks pretty clean it also doesn't look that bad with the included cables too yeah his kid has a faster pc than you do chris uh but thanks for sharing uh phone and um i think i saw so i saw your email and I just didn't have a chance to respond and I forgot about it after I read it. So sorry about that. But thanks for posting it on the stream so everyone else could see too. So, okay. All right. We got Christopher Coonan with his post. This is his stock. So Christopher Coonan, let's take a look at the stock he has of a bunch of Dell office machines. I can't tell what some of these cases are here. A bunch of systems. I'm going to guess most of these are really old and don't have a ton of value. Um, I mean, they might have like a decent value on like an eBay listing or offer up, but they might not be moving at those prices if they're too old, but okay. There's your stock there. And then you got a ton of laptops. Holy, this is a lot dirt. Is, he, is this hoarding? Is this hoarding or is this, uh, they're, they're somewhat organ. Okay. At least he's organized, right? Like, look at these monitors. They're all lined up facing the same direction. These at least are in like one shelf stacked up. This one, uh, this one looks more like hoarding because of the way that these, some of them are stacked like sideways and stuff like that. How much, okay. <sighs> Christopher Kunin, how much of this stuff could be used for a budget like budget gaming uh at least let's say 1080p like they don't have to have graphics cards in them but like i'm trying to get an idea of what generation motherboards and processors you have in each of these systems are we talking about like these were basically free giveaway things with like you know stuff that's 15 years old or are some of these like at least sandy bridge or at least first gen uh like first gen i5s and i3s and stuff like that same with these laptops do you have chargers for each of these this is pretty crazy you're starting an eBay store, so I guess that's um, that's not hoarding, but. These PCs are at least, yeah. I mean, I can tell by some of these, they look like 10 years old. 
um, but he might have some slightly more modern optiplexes in here, like right here or this one. I can't really tell, but the tops are old crap. Okay, the bottoms are all I yeah okay core i threes and i sevens. Not bad. The laptops are all newer core or AMD. Okay, and you you have chargers for each of these in a bag or a box somewhere that's marked. I'm guessing you have. I would totally mix chargers and stuff accidentally. Hey, what's up, Lisset World Tech? What did you miss? Uh, I'm not sure if you saw. This was the best value by vote. And then this is a pretty good second for 500 bucks because it comes with a 1660 Ti and a 3600X. So for another 100 bucks, you can make this a very capable gaming PC by upping the RAM and SSD. But yeah, that's the only, that's what you missed, I think, for the most part. Um, and then we've been going through Twitter submissions. Not a ton tonight, which is fine. We have about 10 minutes left to stream, so. Okay, so he does have a huge bin of marked chargers. But yeah, man, that, uh, that's just. What I would be like the most nervous about or maybe the most annoyed about if I had to grab stuff from the bottom because Getting to the bottom of this stack, I don't think there's much other ways to do it except to take everything off the top of it. Like if you were to grab this, I think this thing would drop right here. So yeah, seems seems like a lot. If but maybe once you have your store set up and you have more space, you can like lay these out uh, on the floor or something so they're not all stacked. Yeah, I want something from the bottom. I hate I personally deal with that. Like when I have a bunch of boxes stacked up. Um, I always, for whatever reason, need this stuff on the bottom, uh, for my, like, PC cases or whatever, so, um, alright, thanks for that submission, we got probably just, we got two more, and I'm gonna do them real quick, so then we can just hang out and, uh, just chat for the rest of the stream. Alright, K, upgrading my nephew's PC, has 11400F3060, very solid specs, 32 gigs of RAM, and an O11 dynamic mini, that's the pretty solid specs and a nice case for a nephew when i hear nephew i'm just assuming like you know middle school or uh or a uh elementary school or your nephew might be older but this assuming they're like in middle school or younger this is a very nice case so that was the old build and bam you've upgraded i mean it had like uh was that xfx i would guess like a 480 or 580 not the best cooler all that and then bam you have this with a gigantic Vegeta Funko Pop with a deep cooler, uh, the deep cool cooler. I like the color scheme, red and white. Looks very nice. You got the Unifans in here. Oh man, no, I need to show this. I'm sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I was on the wrong screen. There you go. Yes, I know. This means I kept going on and on and on. Um, but yeah, so here was the other build. And then here is the new build, which very solid specs. Uh, I mean, looks very nice. Got the cable extensions, everything. Got the huge Vegeta doll, or not doll, Funko Pop. Yeah, it is a huge Funko Pop. Um, and then the Gohan one-handed Kamehameha versus Cell. Uh, yeah, this look, and there's a PS5 here. So yeah, this looks like a very nice setup for your nephew. Uh, these picks are fine and forgot to take better before picture. Oh, yeah, the before picks would have been nice to see with better light, but Jason Wimmer, am I the only one who doesn't like toys and cases? Okay, let's see. Funko. All right, we're asking the community Funko pops in cases. What are y'all's thoughts on that? That, I would say, I think Joey Delgado is the content creator that comes to mind when I think of Funko Pops in PC cases. I don't know if he was the first to do it. I think he popularized it. Uh, but there might be other creators who have done it before that. Um, but this is, this is an extreme example. There are other, let's go to a Joey Delgado uh, PC build. See if I can find an image on here. If you look at Joey's like stuff like spiral the dragon hello kitty yellow ranger so all, almost every single build i think he does a funko pop he's made it kind of his own thing which is pretty cool but i'm not sure 
what everyone else's thoughts on it. Um, I I think when you do theme builds like this, where you like paint it and make it match, I think all of Joey's builds look pretty good actually. Uh, and I I personally wouldn't put a Funko Pop in my own build though. Thanks for the submission, okay? Let's see. I don't mind it, but I wouldn't do it personally. But I'm in the middle of the camp, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess... Well, it's pretty 50-50 split. I guess I should have given an option. Depends. But no, I don't want anyone to be a fence-sitter. You either say yes or you say no. And we have a very, very... Wow, 50-50 right now. Jason Whitmer doesn't like Funko Pops, but likes waifu figures. Which I believe yours does- your, your case can't have a waifu figure because it's- it's an ITX, but you used to have it. Steven L1399, greetings from upstate New York. Hey, what's up? Greetings from, uh, around the Seattle area. Hope you're doing well as well. Alright, Brian Robinson, last one. I have a problem. Alright, you have a problem buying a bunch- are these empty or are there stuff in it? Um, but yeah, it looks like you just have you have a bunch of PC parts. Oh, micro! I see micro center stickers on here. So yeah, if, if I had micro center near me, I probably would have even more stuff. Just from like open box deals, most likely. Oh, these are all used for builds. Okay, yeah. I mean, if you're buying. And then, you know, moving the builds to sell and stuff. Uh, and then just replenish or, you know, buying more stuff. If this is just filled with actual hardware being unused sitting around, then, yeah, you have a real problem. But if you're using it to make builds, because, like, what I'm, let's see, how many builds is this? One, two, three. Well, we're, we have a lot of motherboard boxes. I don't know if the, it looks like five boxes worth of stuff without the case boxes. Let's see, one, two, three, four. I'm counting five. Motherboard boxes and five graphics card boxes. So about five builds worth of stuff. Neuron budget. Do you love Micro Center or Costco more? I think... Uh... Ooh, if I could... Oh man, this is tough. I think I use Costco more. Like we need groceries and... I guess, but you can buy from a normal grocery store. It's not Costco. Ooh, that's a good poll. Okay, we're gonna... We're gonna end the poll. Because we're going to ask that one. That's actually a good question that I'm struggling answering that. Yeah, I think I'm, I might take Costco too. But let's ask the poll anyway. Micro Center or Costco in your state? You can only choose one. Okay. Because I think there's more value to be had at Costco. We spend more at Costco than I would at a Micro Center. That, you know, I could... You save a little bit more at Micro Center, but... I don't buy, and I'm not a flipper, so I don't buy a ton of PC parts uh, to be able to benefit from Micro Center enough. Okay, so we're going to ask the community. We have both in our state. Well, if you're, you have both in your state, then you're a very lucky person. Micro Center or Costco in your state? You can only choose one. Let's see what people say. Because you, there are alternatives to both. Um... You know, you don't need a Costco. There's other grocery stores. But you also don't need Micro Center. You can some you can get great, great deals uh, at Newegg and stuff like that in Amazon sometimes. So, <laughs> come on. I love Micro Center, but Costco sells food. Come on, guys. I feel like maybe the people who are maybe more or like older or more mature would choose Costco. Because, you know, gaming PCs isn't what we live and breathe or anything like that. Um, we have to consider everything else that Costco, the benefits of Costco comes, which is like the gas, uh, all the foods and other stuff, like appliances for your home. A lot of our appliances and stuff are from Costco. Once we see a good deal, when we need to replace something, like our dual air fryer is from Costco. It's a Ninja brand one. So yeah, I wouldn't have gotten that from Micro Center. I don't think they have those. Where else are you going to get $5 chicken? That's true. Everyone bringing up the chicken. All right. So we have more votes for Costco, which I'm glad to see. People haven't completely lost their minds because think about it. 
how often do you buy stuff for your computers? If you're a flipper or something, then I can get it. But for the average PC like builder or like a con for a consumer PC tech, you build your system. You might do little incremental upgrades here and there for the SSD or something like that. But you know, you build your system and it sits there for like two to three years until you upgrade it again. So you're not buying a ton of stuff at Micro Center unless you're a flipper, like I said, and reselling and stuff like that. But yeah, Costco, way more value. That's my vote. <laughs> But I think it was a good question though, because it made me think. It made me have to think. Like, it wasn't just an instant Costco. I think it's because, I, you know, we've been deprived of Micro Center and we lost fries in Washington State that um, my, my judgment was clouded a little bit. Okay, here's a good question. When was the last time y'all touched your PCs and changed something? I'd say every other week. Oh, flipping life for a Kryptonic. The last time I had to touch or like do any, actually when I built the system that I'm using, which is the 6700 XT, uh, you know, vertical ITX case, the Revolt 3 build. I don't think I've had to touch it since I made that video, which was a few months ago. Um, yeah, I haven't changed any of the SSDs, increased RAM, none of that. It's just, I've been using it as is, I, but I have been, touching and building other PC builds. So maybe that's different. HMart is slapping too. Yes, it, we, we have a HMart right next to our Costco. So we often do both in the same night when we do grocery shopping. Uh, let's see, we have S10 Draven says, to be fair for what stuff you buy that you don't need Costco, wait, what? To be fair, for what stuff you buy that you don't need Costco, you could buy a baller PC from Micro Center. Why is that still reading weird to me? Is that reading weird to anyone else? For what stuff you buy that you... Oh, you're saying because, yeah, a lot of times when people go to Costco, they buy stuff they don't need just because it's there and it's on sale. Or, yeah, like, I don't know, the towels or like the throw blankets or something. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So if you don't buy that stuff that's not necessary, you could buy a new PC. <laughs> But wouldn't you rather have year-round buying stuff that's not necessary but you still really want than a one PC build every three years? Yeah, so a lot of... Yeah, so the question is... So I'm going to end this one. Oh, uh, wow. It came back a little bit closer. When's the last time you worked or you like added a part or when did you build your personal system? And for me, it's I haven't I haven't upgraded it since uh, I built it. I'm curious where everyone else like. Are you constantly fidgeting with your own personal system, or once it's built, is it pretty much sitting there and you're good until your next major upgrades? Air dusting doesn't count. <laughs> hey, what's up, friends? Uh, where is the land party stories video? That that one. It's it's. I'm going to say sometime in September, hopefully. Yeah, being sick did not help because uh, having no energy and not wanting to work on YouTube videos for the last like three weeks, that definitely did not help get it out any faster. Um, so, six hour cut, no. I think I, depending on how much stuff there is, I might be willing to do like a two hour cut for the just like the main video. I just need to timestamp it a little bit better so that people can at least skip to the certain days or any major thing that happens. Twenty twenty two and still adding parts because I need better RAM and maybe a better CPU. Wait, so you built your system in twenty twenty two and you're still adding parts? So you're already upgrading your CPU, not even a year down the road. Okay. Extreme Zone 987. I like this way of thinking. I used to tinker, but now that I'm a little more experienced, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I think I'm the same way too. Like, but again, it's hard to speak as a creator because I'm still fidgeting with other builds that's not my own personal ones. But not everyone has a bunch of spare parts or like builds sitting around. So they don't get, they only get that from their main system. So, okay. Actually, I had another question I wanted to ask before I ended stream. Do you up? Oh. 
Uh, okay. So this is regarding BIOS. Um, and it, it has to do with if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So do you, all you out there, do you update your BIOS just because there's an update out for it? So like if you go to the manufacturer's website from the motherboard and you see there's a newer version, do you update it? if you find out about it or would you just say ah whatever i'll wait for if it's like a major one or if i'm having issues with my my motherboard um i'm of the camp of only when it's necessary um i yeah but i'm curious what everyone else does out there and th yeah that's a good point jason so update when you first build it because you're already you know like um doing like driver setup and in os install and stuff like that but uh after the fact what do you do yeah and a lot of the times with the bios updates it's it's stuff like uh you know improved memory support and things like that there are some times uh, where there is like a major thing, almost like recall worthy, that they would put BIOS updates for as well. But I'm, I'm just talking about just like your system is working perfectly fine. And it's just like a minor BIOS update, it, you know, slightly more uh, support for like faster RAM or something like that. S10 Draven says, I'm not super computer savvy, so worried I'll, uh, so they're worried they'll mess something up. Uh, so just update when necessary. Yeah, that's the thing too. Also, w when y'all upgrade your BIOS, are you plugged into a, um, into like a, like a UPS, like a battery? Cause uh, I've personally never had a PC like, or like the power go out during a BIOS update. Um, but that's the most dangerous time for it to mid update to go out. And I've never like forced it either just because, I don't know. Maybe I should with like an older system to see just what happens. But I think there could be multiple uh, scenarios that happen. Uh, you may be able to back up or use a backup BIOS or something like that to fix it. Or it could brick your motherboard. So that's, I'm just worried about bricking the motherboard and just wasting hardware. But has anyone out there, well one, do you, when you do your BIOS update, I'm assuming most people aren't plugged into UPSs. Uh, so you're kind of taking a risk, right? If for whatever reason your power goes out. Um, and then two, have you ever had your PC shut off during a BIOS update? And then what happened? I'm curious to hear what the different stories are. Patrick McGovern, I had a BIOS update fail once on an 1155 board, but I was able to fix it by buying a $3 BIOS chip. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I, I've heard about that. Um, I don't think, I don't think most beginners anyways could do that if you're an experienced person who's never done it you could probably ebay or google or youtube it but um that also i wonder if, how lucky you were that the bio ship worked and if there wasn't any other scenario where it was basically a bricked board kevin goes says i will only buy mobiles that has the flash bios flashback option but what if you brick it and it just doesn't work afterwards even with like flashback assumes that you can still get into it and do stuff I've never, well, because I've never killed a motherboard, but the a lot of motherboards now, they have the ability to flash the BIOS without having the CPU in there. There's like a button that you press and you have to hold it and do stuff like that. I don't know if that would work when the motherboard is bricked. I've never experienced that, so. Oh, nice. You just pull off the old chip, Patrick, or uh, the one that you bought from eBay. That's nice. Yeah, not needing the solder. I think that's like a barrier to entry to some people. This is a question for Bitwit. Did that happen? I'm not super kept up with all of Kyle's videos, but um, did that happen to Kyle? Yeah, it could be a new video idea. Um, but the thing is, even if you do it to one motherboard, unless he, like, I wouldn't know if that's the typical behavior. And I wouldn't want people to watch that video and say like, oh, uh, I could do it and it'll be fine if I am able to recover it. Like you would need a lo way larger sample size to be able to determine, you know, the different scenarios that happens when you lose power during uh, BIOS update. Bitwit has killed a couple of boards because of 
the bio specifically updating and shutting down midway or for other reasons. Yeah, so in terms of the boat, it looks like most people, almost 80%, only upgrade the BIOS when necessary, which is the camp that I fall into. So, um, all right. It's good to know. Doing a little bit of research too um, for like future videos. Oh. It looks like we have a. I'll pull this up to end the night off. But Kevin Ngo just posted a two terabyte silicon power SSD. This is their very budgety one, right? 104, 105 bucks for two terabytes. Let me show this here. Um, there's a. I think Jason was talking about a Patriot one that was also two terabytes for a hundred bucks. About so yeah, uh, two and a half inch drives going down in price. Um, I should actually, I need to pick up some two and a half inch SSDs because for testing two and a half inch drives are more convenient than NVMe drives or M.2 drives because older systems that don't have NVMe slots in them or the M.2, uh, yeah, you, you can still use a two and a half inch SSD with them. So yeah, I need a, I don't know if I'll pick this one up, but I need to look into other two terabyte ones. Oh, the Patriot one got sold out? Dang. But, all right. Um, okay, so we are well beyond two hours into stream. I want to think, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know why, but I totally... Sorry to all the channel members that I'm only bringing up the list now. I forgot to do it at the beginning of the stream. I usually do it at the beginning and the end. But, first of all, thank you to everyone who has attended the stream continues to do so every week and especially the channel members who you know support the channel and the people who do the gifted memberships so that others can enjoy the emotes as well as the longevity badge and all that but yeah i want to thank you all as always for a pretty fun successful stream in my opinion um we found basically that most system integrators don't have amazing value and costco had to come save the day for that but um yeah uh, in terms of upcoming content, the Phoenix PCs did come in earlier this week, so I need to do a review on those, as well as the SockX video, which I've been sitting on for like a few weeks now because it just takes so long to ship things back and forth, uh, as well as the, you know, the customer service. So I'm hoping the graphics card should be in StockX's hands now, the fake graphics card. I'm hoping they get and give an email response, return the money, and then I could put the video out this weekend, if not on Monday, but we'll have to see. But yeah, hope everyone else has a great rest of your evening. Have a great rest of your week and a weekend coming up. Uh, and yeah, I will see you either in the comments of the next video, whenever that drops, uh, or in next week's stream. Take care, everyone. Uh, thanks to all the mods again for being here and just moderating and keeping the chat flowing. Have a good night.